Okay. So what we are talking about today is implicit differentiation. So first off, let's just get back to fundamental idea. What is a derivative? So slope of the line, more specific, slope of what line? Tangent. Okay. So the slope of the tangent line. Okay. Oops. What happens if I had a function like this? Y squared equaling X. If I were to graph y squared equaling x, it would look like kind of this C shape or a parabola opening to the right. What is the derivative at x equaling 4? What problem do we run into? So there's two possible options here. We could have a tangent line here, but we could also have a tangent line here. This function, y squared equaling x, is called an implicit function. An implicit function is made up of explicit functions. So this one explicitly, the top line is y equals root x. So that red line, if I were to graph y equals root x, it would just be that top line, which makes sense. We're not working with imaginary numbers or anything. So square root of x, I can't take a square root of a negative number. And then also my bottom line is y equals a negative square root of x. So the negative just means it's going to be reflected across the x-axis. So explicitly, this is two functions. But we can combine these two functions and don't think of it as a as chain rule combination type stuff. Rewriting these explicit functions as one single function, which would be y squared equaling x. And so we are going to practice implicit differentiation, finding the derivative of implicit functions. Okay. All right. So implicit differentiation allows us to find derivatives of functions that are not defined or written explicitly as a function of a single variable. Okay, you don't need to write this down word for word. I'll put these slides on Schoology anyway. Okay, so again, explicitly, we could change y squared equaling x into two separate functions and graph it. But, with the tools now we're going to have to differentiate an implicit function, we can go right from there. We don't have to separate it into two separate functions. How we're going to do this, we are going to treat y as a differentiable function of x. We're going to do several example problems today. There's a process that will follow, and the more times you do it, the better you'll get, and it'll start to make more sense. Okay, so just a quick review. If I were to show or show how to find dy, uh, let's change this back. Let's do dy dx if y equals x squared. Let's do it that way. So we want to show how to find dy dx if y equals x squared using chain rule. Okay, so in order to do this, we would take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. So d dx of y and then ddx of x squared. ddx of y there on the left, that becomes my dy dx. So the derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. And now on the right, derivative of x squared with respect to x. 
So this is important. So we could think of this as chain rule, okay? We've been doing it and not even using the chain rule, but if we thought of this with chain rule, this is two times x times x prime. Okay, if we thought of this with chain rule, this is what's going on, two times x times x prime. But in our case, what is x prime? One. So it's multiplying by one, so we don't even write that. All right, so we were doing problems that involve the chain rule without even knowing the chain rule is going on. So it's kind of happening in the background and just creates a multiplication of one, so we don't even write that out. One thing I do want you to pay special attention to is I'm taking the derivative of a function x with respect to x. If I have a derivative with re derivative of a function x with respect to x, it's everything we've been doing up until today. Now over here, when I had the derivative of my function y with respect to x, those are different. So I can't, I can't do anything with that. That's why y does not become 1. Because it's a derivative of my function y with respect to x. It's not, y is not 1. The derivative of y is not 1. It is derivative of y with respect to x. So we just write it as dy dx. Okay, so this is kind of the fundamental idea of working with implicit differentiation. Make sure we are paying close attention to those variables. What's going on in the denominator? What are we taking the derivative with respect to? So that's going to make a big difference in how we actually solve these. Okay, so back to our opening problem. We want to find the derivative of y squared equaling x. Okay, so to do this, we do ddx of y squared and then ddx of x. Look at the right. What's the derivative of x with respect to x? What's that going to be? 1. Okay. And we could even think of it in this notation. It would be dx over dx, which is 1. Okay. You can think of it that way too. Okay. So the derivative of a function x with respect to x is 1. Okay. Now on the left, the derivative of our function y squared with respect to x. So this is chain rule going on here. So what's going to be my derivative of y squared with respect to x? So what's my outside going to do? 2y inside stays, because y squared, the 2 comes down, y stays times what? Not 1. y prime which we are going to write as simply dy dx, same thing, okay? dy dx is the same thing as y prime. We are going to work in this Leibniz notation of what's called Leibniz was one of the original founders of calculus. Okay, he would always do it in this fractional form. So dy dx. So 2y dy dx equals 1, okay? And we're, another reason we're wanting it to be dy dx is because we're trying to find dy dx. So let's just leave it as dy dx. These are being multiplied, and so if I divide this side by 2y and this side by 2y, I'm simply left with dy dx equals 1 over 2y, and I'm done. This is my derivative function. Okay, the derivative of y with respect to x, when I started out, y squared equals x. Okay, so we're going to come back to that here in a minute. But there is a process to follow when doing implicit differentiation. So we did kind of a, a baseline example there, but I want to highlight the full process because the problems are going to get more involved. Differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x. So that's that ddx, putting that in front of whatever, both sides. So differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x. Second step, 
collects all terms with dy dx onto one side of the equation. So the quick example we just did, there was only one dy dx, and so we got that to one side, it was already there. But we're going to get into more advanced problems where we're going to have multiple dy dx's, and so we're going to get them all to one side. Once we get them all to one side, we're going to factor out a dy dx, because we could have multiple terms that when using that chain rule, we came up with a times dy dx from our chain rule. So we want to factor out dy dx, and then lastly, solve. So we end up with dy dx equals something. Okay, so not a complex process, but we need to follow the same process every single time we do any implicit differentiation problems. Differentiate both sides with respect to x. Collect all terms on one side, factor, and ultimately solve. Okay, so again, back to our opening problem. If we want to find the derivative of this using our process that I just laid out, differentiate both sides with respect to x. So ddx of y squared, and then ddx of x. So that was at step one. Okay, so if we were to differentiate both sides, we've already done this, but 2y times dy dx equals 1. Step 2, collect all terms with dy dx on one side of the equation. Okay, so we only want dy dx to be the only thing that's on one side. So we want to eliminate, or we want to move this 2y to the other side, so we divide. So we have dy dx equals 1 over 2y. So that's what it means, move everything to one side. There was not any factoring on this one, and there was really no solving because we were already at this step. Okay, so using that step-by-step -step process, we still get to the same answer. So, putting this back together in the context of our original problem. We found the derivative is 1 over 2y. That is the derivative function. We want to figure it out when x equals 4. So that notation, what is dy dx? The vertical bar just means evaluated at, evaluated at x equaling 4. Well, we would have, well, dy dx is going to be equal to 1 over 2. Well, at 4, I have a positive 2, so 2 times 2 to get 1 fourth. But I also have dy dx equaling 1 over 2 times negative 2 to get a negative 1 fourth. So my function 1 over 2y allows me now to put in my different y values and not strictly relating back to the x value. Okay, so we're writing now our final function in terms of y rather than x. So the one positive one fourth, that's easy enough. That tells me that this has a slope of one fourth. And then the bottom one has a slope of negative one fourth. So implicitly differentiating the function y squared equals x, we end up with a new derivative function. We want to figure it out at x equaling 4. Well, at x equaling 4, y is 2 and y is negative 2. That's what we actually put into our derivative formula to come up with those slopes. Make sense? Take that as a yes. Okay. Let's do another one. Let's find the slope, and instead of, of a circle, I'll say on the circle. If I had x squared plus y squared equals 25, this is my setup to a circle. So I have a radius of 5, 
and I want to find the slope at 3 comma negative 4. Okay, so in order to do this, I'm going to use my implicit differentiation. Um, this is two functions, but we don't want to worry about that. Okay, so we are going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. So ddx of x squared plus ddx of y squared equals ddx of 25. When I say both sides, we did it on the left, it applies to every single term. So I just go ahead, you're going to write it on every term anyway. What is the derivative of x squared with respect to x? 2x. Okay, I'm not trying to trick you. What's the derivative of y squared with respect to x? So 2y times dy dx. There's chain rule going on. Okay, so we're differentiating a, differentiating a function y with respect to x. What is the derivative of 25 with respect to x? Zero. Okay, so we've done our differentiating. Step two, collect all terms with dy dx on one side. So the 2y dy dx, that's one term. It's 2 times y times dy dx. But I can move this 2x here at the front to the other side with subtraction. So I just subtract 2x from each side. So 2y dy dx equals a negative 2x. Next step is to factor. There's nothing to factor out because I only have one dy dx. So divide by 2y, divide by 2y. I'll end up with dy dx equals a negative 2x all over 2y, which is simply just negative x over y. Okay, so this is my derivative function. This represents the slope at any point on my circle. This is the derivative function for this circle one that I was given, x squared plus y squared equals 25. Okay? So if I want to find it exactly at 3 comma 4, I'm going to use my notation dy dx evaluated at, and I'm going to put an actual coordinate here because it's not just x equals. Let's do it specifically at 3, negative 4. Because x equals 3, there's two spots where x equals 3. I'm going to do it exactly at 3, comma, negative 4. So that notation, dy dx, vertical bar, just means evaluated at. And at this point, it's the coordinate 3, comma, negative 4. So it's going to be a negative of my x, which is 3, negative 4 in my denominator. And so that becomes a positive positive. 3 fourths. So the slope of my tangent line here is going to be a positive 3 fourths. Then I have here on the bottom, bottom left, what about at the coordinate 5 comma 0 or negative 5 comma 0, what's the slope there? undefined okay because i'm looking here and i'm looking here i have a vertical tangent and that is an undefined slope cannot find the derivative there all right so on this circle i could find the slope of the tangent line everywhere except at plus minus five so there is an exception to my where the derivative is actually defined at. You're going to have some questions that will say, where is it defined? Or where is it not defined? All right, we could find it at the top and bottom, and it'd be a slope of zero. So we could figure that out. Okay, whoa. 
All right, let's do another one. Let's show that dy dx, so the derivative, is defined at every point on the graph of 2y equals x squared plus sine of y. So to do this, we're going to take the derivative with respect to x of every single piece. So every single term, I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x. Okay, that's my first step. And I know it's with respect to x because they asked me to find dy dx. If they said find dy dt, I would take the derivative with respect to t of every single term. Okay, so don't, don't blaze over when you see dy dx, like, oh, okay, it's just a derivative. Pay close attention to those variables. If they change this up and said find dx dy, well, then I got to take the derivative with respect to y on every single term. So pay attention to what's being asked. All right. So d dx of 2y, what is the derivative of 2y with respect to x? So it's 2 and then dy dx. Because 2 is my constant multiple. So really all I'm doing is taking the derivative of y. So the derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. What's the derivative of x squared with respect to x? 2x, that's what we've been doing. Okay, as long as those match up, my function is x squared, I'm x for the derivative with respect to x, same thing I've been doing. The derivative of sine of y with respect to x. So this is chain rule. So cosine of y times by dx. And my outside function is sine, so derivative of sine is cosine. My inside function is just y. Derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. All right, so now I've differentiated it. The very first step done. Next step, collect all terms with dy dx onto one side. All right, so on this one, I would just do, let's leave this one here on the left. I'm going to bring all of this over because that's one term. It's positive on the right. So I need to subtract it, so it's cosine of y, dy dx equals 2x. So collect all terms with dy dx on one side. Next step, factor out dy dx. So I have two terms on the left that are multiplied by dy dx, so I can do some factoring out of the dy dx. 2 minus cosine of y equals 2x. And then lastly, solve. So I can divide this out. So I'm going to divide it from both sides. So final answer here, dy dx is going to be equal to 2x divided by 2 minus cosine of y. All right. The problem said they'll show that that is defined at every single point. How do I make a rational function, a fraction, undefined? If the denominator is what? Zero. Okay. Let's look at cosine. So think back to the trig sine wave, or I'm sorry, cosine wave. What's the highest number that the cosine wave will be? One. What's the smallest it's going to be? Negative one. So this is really saying two plus one or two minus one, or two minus a negative one or two minus a plus one. Okay, that's all legal. If this had been one minus cosine of y, then we'd run into an issue. But this is defined everywhere because the range, the y values, of cosine of y 
is simply going to be from is negative 1, and that's inclusive, so I'm going to write interval notation, negative 1 all the way up to a positive 1. It's only in those values. So if I did 2 minus a negative 1 or 2 plus or 2 minus a positive 1, it would still work. It's not undefined anywhere. All right, let's look at number one already from your classwork. We're going to do this one plus one more problem. So this is, this is number one right away, right out the gate from your classwork. Find dy dx for this function, 8x squared y plus 3xy squared equals a negative 5. Same thing, I just follow my process. I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x because they asked me to find dy dx, so the derivative with respect to x of every single term, so 8x squared y plus d dx of 3xy squared equals d dx of negative 5. I'm taking the derivative of 8 times x squared times y. So there's a constant multiple going on. So we can actually bring that 8 out. And we could bring the 3 out as well. Let's make things a little bit cleaner. Derivative of a constant 0. So I'm just going to go ahead and make that 0 already. The derivative of x squared y with respect to x. How do I do that? What's going on between the x squared and the y? That chain rule. Multiplication is going on. There's a product there. We have to use product rule. Okay? So, product rule, if we break this up, so the derivative of this with respect to x. So I'm going to write it as x squared, that stays. The derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx plus now the derivative of x squared with respect to x is 2x times y. So the derivative of x squared times y with respect to x, we have to use product rule. Just need pairs. One's a derivative and one's not. So I left x squared alone. The derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. And the derivative of x squared is 2x and left y alone. Plus 3 times x times y squared. Product rule again. So I'll leave x alone. The derivative of y squared is what? 2y dy dx. So this very first one is x times 2y times dy dx plus my derivative of x is just 1 times y squared. All of this equals 0. So I'm going to distribute it in now the 8 and the 3. So this is 8x squared dy dx plus 16xy plus 6xy dy dx plus 3y squared equals 0. Take your time on these. When you're working these out in your notebook or on separate paper, don't try to cram it in. Make sure you give yourself plenty of space. A lot of these problems that get longer and longer, I take like half a page when I'm working through these just to keep myself organized. I'm not trying to cram anything in. I'm going step by step so I don't miss anything along the way. The signs are easy to mix up. What's being multiplied is easy to mix up. Take your time working through these.
Okay, so that was only the first step. We differentiated each piece with respect to x. Now we got to move all the dy dx's to one side. All right, so this one's already here. This one's already here. I'm going to eliminate, I'm going to move the other ones over. So I'd say negative 16xy minus 3y squared. And then on the left here, I still have 8x squared dy dx plus 6xy dy dx. Factor out a dy dx. And then lastly, solve. So for this one, the derivative of y with respect to x is going to be negative 16xy minus 3y squared, all divided by 8x squared plus 6y. So if I'm given a point in xy coordinates, I would simply put it right into this function, and that would tell me the slope of that tangent line. Lena, do you have a question? Um, you don't need to. No, you can leave it just like that. Okay, so that's number one from your classwork. So I'll give you a start on that. Let's do one more real quick, and then we'll be done. So what's so we're all starting to see this notation. What's this notation asking us for? Second derivative. So we have to find the first derivative, evaluate the derivative of the first derivative to get the second derivative. So let's do the first derivative. So ddx of 2x cubed minus ddx of 3y squared equals ddx of 8. Derivative of 2x cubed with respect to x. 6x squared. Don't forget the squared. What is the derivative of 3y squared with respect to x? 6y dy dx equals 0. So on this one, and it doesn't matter, I'd probably move the 6y dy dx to the other side, so I can already see it's negative. And then divide by 6y, divide by 6y, and I end up with x squared over y equals dy dx. That's first derivative. Now we have to find the derivative of that. Okay, so again, we had x squared over y equals dy dx. To find the derivative of this, we do the same thing. We're going to find the derivative of each side. This is where our d squared y all over dx squared comes in. Okay, so I'm taking the derivative with respect to x of dy dx. That's why we get that d squared y dx squared. How do I find the derivative on the left? Quotient rule. 
Okay. Let's, uh, I'm going to go this direction with it so we have more space. So it's low times the derivative of the high. And again, all these derivatives are with respect to x. So this is just 2x minus the high times the derivative of the low. What's the derivative of the low? dy dx all over low squared. What is dy dx in terms of a value? Or even, in a, what is dy dx in this problem? Okay, so really now we can say 2xy, combine these together, minus x squared times x squared over y. Because dy dx, from the very beginning, dy dx is x squared over y. So doing a second derivative, once you, on your second derivative, if dy dx pops up, which it will, look back to your first derivative because you actually know what that is. All over y squared. So this is 2xy. x squared times x squared over y would be x to the fourth all over y. All over y squared. We can do heart surgery on this. We know it's this, and we know it's this. 2xy divided by y squared, that would just be 2x all over y. We could eliminate a y from the numerator and one from the denominator. Oops. x to the fourth divided by y divided by y squared. What's my denominator going to be? y cubed. Because it's x to the fourth divided by y divided by y squared. There's actually three of them that are going to be falling under x. So this would be my final second derivative. 2x over y minus x to the fourth all over y cubed.